I'm working on a core for this pattern. This is a wooden pattern for a little 10cc four-stroke engine I'm working on. It's the crankcase pattern. Okay, I'm, what I'm doing right now is packing the core mold with more sand and the, the sand I'm using is the mixture of flour, water, molasses, and playground sand. This is the core for the crankcase pattern, or this crankcase pattern. You see these core prints here and here. I like to have a little extra so that when I squish these two halves together, it completely uh, fills the mold. So you can see here's what we're looking to get is this core right here and I put a vent through the middle, a vent hole by using a piece of uh, thin, this is just a piece of welding rod through there to let steam out when the hot molten metal hits the mold it's going to create steam you want to minimize that as much as possible but you can't completely eliminate it so you put vents in your mold little holes with a wire to vent out the steam so the bubbles don't go into your melted your liquid metal and make and make voids if you have a lot of steam you'll have bubbles going into your liquid metal all right I'm gonna have to mix up a little a little bit more core material, core sand. So what I have here is uh, playground sand, just a little playground sand. Okay. And then I have a mixture here of molasses and water that I've mixed up. Just regular old molasses from the grocery store. Pour a little of that in. Okay, now I'm adding a little bit of just regular old flour. Just a little bit. A little more sand. Kind of go back and forth till you get a nice consistency. The flour and molasses acts as a binder a binder and it binds the sand together to hold while you're while you're molding and then of course you want it to unbind you want it to break apart after you put the 1200 degree aluminum aluminum pours best right at about 1200 degrees right at 1200 cooler than that it might not pour might not be liquid enough to pour through all your little sprues and thin casting parts. You want this core to unbind when you have your castings cooled, your parts out of the sand. You want it to be pretty easy to crumble out. I'll put it in the toaster oven and bake it for, bake it at about 225 for an hour. Or you know whatever it takes. If you pull it out you can still see that it's it's damp Put it back in for another 20 minutes. It'll make your workshop smell nice when you're cooking it. it smells like cookies bacon. You could also do this in halves. You could mold this in, in, a, in two halves and then glue it together with just some Elmer's white glue. If you need a real smooth pattern, you can paint. If you paint this with white glue, some Elmer's glue, it can make the outside surface smoother if you need a smoother surface. This is going to be machined anyway. Your core is usually. The core hole is going to be smaller than your required hole, so you can go in there and machine machine your part to the required dimensions. The hole that the core creates, you want it to make it, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch smaller than the hole that you're going to ultimately machine out. Let me show you that right now. So here's a cylinder head for the midget engine, or cylinder, the cylinder for the midget engine. Here's the pattern for this cylinder. See the core prints? Here's a core for that.
it's got a one inch core because this has an inch and a quarter bore. So here's the core that I use for the midget. And that's when you take the part out of the out of the mold, raw casting looks like this. And you can see here's the machined, here's the machine casting opened up to an inch and a quarter. And here's the raw casting. Can you see that? See how the the cord uh, part, the cord one is quite a bit smaller hole than the machine one. Okay, so now I'm going to clamp these together. I put a hole in the center hole in this, so this holds my vent wire. It holds it in the center of the core pattern. This little, just a wooden plug. Okay, put, the, put this on top of this one. Clamp it. I'm going to pack it down from this end. Here we are with the core mold, aluminum core box, clamped up, and this is my little handy dandy toaster oven. And it's to start, and I'll come back and look at it when that's done. Okay, while the core is uh, cooking, drying, Hardening up in the toaster oven. I have riddled some sand here with this homemade riddle. Been using this for years. It works great with this Petrobon sand. When I riddle it, I riddle it into another little box. Just made a one inch wood. So this is where I just riddle in. This is nice riddled sand, very fine to pack directly against the pattern. This is the bottom board for the flask box. Three quarter plywood that I put two three-quarter inch strips on so that when I pick when I pick up the flask box it's really heavy it's full of sand and get my fingers under there with those little strips to pick it up take it outside and get ready to pour really don't want your sand sticking to that so I use my uh, parting dust parting dust is what I use Talcum powder, baby powder, just a little bit there, dust it on. And then I'm going to put my flask box on top of this. Now, the drag goes bottom up. The drag goes bottom up because that's where the, the pattern, the pattern has pins in it. Now, the first pattern I'm going to put down is the pattern without pins, with the pin holes. Pins locate the pattern together so it's, it doesn't get crooked and, and you know, leave you with a real funny part. Right, so you have the locating pins, called register pins. So I'll bring my riddled sand right up next to the, to the flask box. And I have to think about how to fill how to fill this mold with the molten metal. So one of the best things that I found is to have a little pond, a reservoir that's rounded so the metal can flow and have that reservoir about the same depth as the pattern. And I put my filling sprue, when I flip this over, I'll put the filling sprue right there like that. You can just carve this out of the sand once you pack it in, but I like to have it uh, preset there. You can use a bigger one. Remember, you're going to have to use enough metal to 
fill in this whole reservoir and your part. You know, you don't want to make it so big that it uses up all your metal. And I'll probably carve this out a little bit uh, before it's, it's all through. So that's how that's going to look. I'll put the uh, magic parting dust on the pattern. This powder helps the pattern slip out of the sand easily when you go to take it out. Alright, so now I'm going to put the sand in. I'll put it around the edges first to hold the... I want to hold the pattern in place. Once it's held in place put the, the best sand I have right on top of the pattern. Get a thin layer in there first and then ram that up. It's just a chunk of wood. Um, I've seen people use hammers as a rammer, a mallet, a rubber mallet, a hammer, whatever works. This seems to be the best for me. The wood is lightweight and it rams this sand just the right amount. Steve Chaston books. I think it, they're called uh, Metal Casting 101 and Metal Casting 102. They're really good. He gives you a pattern in there for this uh, hand rammer. It even I got a short pour on it. You can see it's flat on one side. But even with that, it's for me. It's just uh, it's too big and heavy for the tiny work that I do. It does. It does work. It's got two. One's a round circle. One's a flat. And it, you know, it works. I would have made it if I, if I was going to make another one of these. I would have made it uh, quite a bit smaller in diameter. This thing weighs about. I'd say it weighs two and a half pounds. A little more sand here. Uh, once I get the pattern completely covered, then I can go to, with the fine sand, then I can go to the bucket with just, you know, anything. They were called in the foundry. The guys that did the sand were called sand crabs. The old sand crabs called it floor sand because, you know, they would just, the sand would just dump out on the floor and they'd use a shovel and a broom and sweep it up into a big pile and just dump the floor sand. Just... The floor sand is just filler to fill the, the rest of the mold up, get it even so you can flip it over. So that's what I'm going to start doing now is use the, uh, the floor sand bucket, which that's right after I break it out of the mold. I just take, when I break it out of the flask, the cast part, I just dump it in the bucket there. So I'm going to start using that now. packing this down in layers. It's called ramming it up, ramming up a mold. Fast as I can do any mold, it doesn't seem to matter what how big it is, 45 minutes to an hour. That's why they, you know, they'll have match plates and they'll do six parts or more at a time. So here's a match plate I picked up at a junk sale. You can see it's got the reservoir, the molds to go in. It's all in the plate. You would just 
screw this down on your with your register holes on the flask already with the with the sprues the pouring sprues and everything already made it's called a match plate the coke goes on the top and the drag goes on the bottom and then this piece here see this notch that would have a piece of metal in here they attach a vibrator to it to break it loose out of the sand after they rammed it up they vibrate it and then that would break the adhesion the surface tension of the sand to the pattern and you could just lift it right out it's quite a lot of work to have a match plate made up or to do one yourself train man YouTube train man train man Dave he goes through a whole process of making a match plate for some uh, I think for train wheels for his train wheels for his uh, steam-powered locomotive that's a great video it's train man Dave or just train man flip right. you see the pattern in there so now you take the other half of the pattern and just plop it right down and then the other half of the box the mold box cope fits in these slots dust this whole half of the pattern with parting dust and the top that you've just filled with sand you don't want these two to stick together repeat so I'll take the the riddled sand put it on right here this one will stay in position by itself and also on this one, I'm going to have the pouring sprue here, which, uh, oh, by the way, the pouring sprue also has to be dusted. Okay. When you do a lot of casting with one batch of sand, it turns black, it gets dried out. The, of course, the hot metal burns the oil out. Mine gets black and burnt. I save some of it, but a lot of it I just throw out. You can, you can see how black it gets against the part. And, this, and that's completely dry and crusty. It won't stick together, so it's really no good. This one is essentially ready. I have to break it apart and take the take the pattern out. Now for the main, the main one, I, I made a larger pouring basin on this one. Probably should have done this after I broke it apart. Get a little wrap. somewhere to set this when I take it off I'm gonna put the sandbox up here all right so now I've got to take the the half of the pattern came apart which is good so I gotta wrap the pattern and pull it out. So put a little screw or something in the in the hole to help hold it while I pull it out. 
and give something to wrap against. I do it from every direction. And you you kind of see it break loose from the sand along the edges. Just a little gentle wrapping. And all of a sudden it'll just it'll come right out when it's ready. There you go. And now the this is my pouring basin. Just need a little nail and help it out there. Like that. I'm gonna have to scoop this little bridge out here, just using a spoon. Now that will be attached to the part when it comes out, but I'll just hacksaw it off. Okay, so that's the bottom, the drag side. And now I gotta do the, the top, the cope. I'm using the pins that are already in there. Looks pretty loose. Now, the creme de la creme. The whole point of this video is the core. So here's my core. And it's got some flashing on it, so I'm going to clean, just clean that up. This feels a little damp, so I think I'm going to uh, cook this in the mold, in the oven. I'm going to put it back in the core box and cook it a little more. It just feels wet. This thing's kind of delicate, so I'm going to put it back in the, in the box. So here's the core, made out of molasses flour and sand just fit right down in there like that and then I'll close the mold up and pour it's damp to the touch so I'm gonna cook it gonna let it bake another 20 minutes at 225 alright here's the finished cooked core and I'm just gonna drop it right in here <laughs> 